In the next couple of videos, I'm going to go through a few examples of substitution reactions where we're going to be looking at different type of alkyl halides. We'll be looking at primary, tertiary alkyl halides. But one thing that's going to remain constant here is this halide right there. That halide can be represented by an X, and that X then could represent chlorine, bromine, and iodine. It does not represent fluorine. Fluorine is not a good leaving group. So that's what these things have in common, is that they're good leaving groups. Okay. I think I cut that off. So let's take a look at our first reaction here. Okay. And the first one that we're going to look at is a primary alkyl halide. So what would a primary alkyl halide look like? We could say, okay, right there, that's a primary alkyl halide. Now, I could have used any of these three halogens. And it says with sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide. And what is that going to give us? What is our answer going to be? The answer is it's going to form a alcohol. Okay. And there's bromide going to be floating around plus our sodium cation. Now, mechanistically, when you take a look at this, we have to realize that our sodium hydroxide is an ionic species. And so all that we're interested in is the anion, because that's the electron-rich species that's going to do the substitution reaction. On our alkyl halide, we have a good leaving group. And since this is a primary alkyl halide, we can invoke a SN2 mechanism. And the way that SN2 mechanism works is that we take a lone pair off of the electron-rich species. We see that this carbon right here is the electron-poor species. And so that's just going to come in SN2 style and kick off the leaving group. Now, that leaving group is an alkyl halide, so it already has three lone pairs. So over here, it is going to have four lone pairs. So this OH right here, or here, is this one over here. It's just a basic SN2 mechanism. 